Hello, boys and girls. My name is Mike Kelly. Uh, Real Illusion Forum. My, I closed down my animators forum because it was 2D animation mostly, and I'm into 3D now. So, um, anyway, uh, somebody commented uh, last night, I think, on one of my tutorials I did back in October showing how to use Daz expressions in iClone, animate them, and they said, can I use an expression from one Daz character on another Daz character? So I thought I would show you uh, using any kind of expression on any kind of character animating it. And I'll try to do this real quick. We won't go over too much. I would advise you to look at that tutorial before. Uh, look through all my tutorials, but that was in October. Uh, but here's basically we have, I've, I've taken a, a Gen 8 female in Daz. And I applied an expression to her. First, first of all, I exported the base figure. You always have to have a base figure. So I exported the Gen 8 basic female figure, brought it in to CC3, to Character Creator 3, and exported it as a base avatar. You have to have your base avatar. Always you start with your base. And now I've applied an expression to this female. And again, I uh, exported it. So here in CC3, we come in. And we bring in this happy surprise. So we're going to bring in, so again, and this is one of the few times you can actually use basic. Uh, advanced brings in the textures. So if you have any clothing, uh, you always want to, or props or whatever, you always want to use advanced. If you have an avatar skin you want to bring in, you always want to use advanced. The only time you use basic is if you don't have any clothing, you have a naked avatar, but you just want the base uh, mesh itself. So that's that's the only time that you would ever use that. So this is one of the very few times that you would ever use basic. All the other times you would use advanced. So we bring in this expression based upon that, that base um, you know, Gen 8 female. And there she is, okay, like that. So we save out this expression. We go in just like we did before. Uh, we're going to export this as an avatar. Okay. We did this all the same in the first tutorial. So we're going to export it. And we say export. And we go ahead and save it as this base Gen 8 female happy surprise avatar. And I've already saved out the base Gen 8 female avatar, the base avatar. Okay. So we do all that. So let's assume that we did that. Okay. We already did those two things. So now, if we go and we start a new project, uh, we can create a morph that will then have that expression uh, that we can then apply to any character and use to animate for any character. So that's what we're going to do. So we've, again, just to reiterate, we in Daz, we exported a base Gen 8 female, and then we uh, brought it into here and exported it as the base Gen, Gen 8 avatar. And then we brought in the expressions that we wanted and exported them out. So here's the, your, our base character here. So we have this character. So now we're going to create the morph. And we're going to create a morph slider. And we'll call it Happy Surprise. Since that's what it's called. It's a head morph. Okay, head morph. And the default morph is going to be a file. We're going to use it. And we're going to use that default as the base Gen 8 female default. So that's that d female default that we saved down. And then the morph itself is going to be that base Gen 8 female happy surprise morph. And just for fun, we're going to apply it to the current character. You don't have to do this when you create a morph. But we're going to show you. That way it shows you that it actually worked. It's sometimes good when you make a morph to make sure that it actually worked and did exactly what you had intended it to do. So there's our morph. We got this happy surprise, 100%. So we can, we can do this whatever we want. Okay? Got that? So now that we have the ability to do this morph inside of CC3, now we can do it to any character we want. We can either do it inside of, of Character Creator 3 by just applying this morph to any character we bring in, or you can even do it directly inside of my clone. This is kind of cool. So if we go to Content, we just drag over the base Caleb f uh, figure. Um, and this, you should get comfortable or at least familiar with working to and from Character Creator and iClone. Because once you have uh, the correct versions installed, you can go back and forth between the two of them. So here's Caleb, okay? We have Caleb. So now if we go to Modify, and we go to Edit in Character Creator, so, okay? Edit, edit in Character Creator. When we do that, it brings it over in Character Creator. We're not going to save this project. We're going to replace everything. And so Caleb comes back over here from iClone. Um, and again, you can do this process with a, with a regular Character Creator 3 uh, figure. I'm just showing you how you can do it in iClone. Uh, doesn't matter though. Characters are characters. So get it all updated there. Okay. Come in eventually. 
There we go. Okay, so now we have kind of, and notice we can apply now that morph. We have that morph that we created, so we can apply that morph to him. And now we go and we're going to save that avatar, just like we did before, to save the avatar to give us, in this case, I've already done it. I call it Caleb Happy Surprise Avatar. We're going to save it. Same, same thing. We'll replace it. doesn't matter. So now once we have this avatar, now we can go back to iClone. This is pretty cool. And now we can do the same thing we did before. We can create the animations with that avatar. So now we're, we go to the, always go to, um, to the motion editor and modify. Go to Morph Creator because we're going to create a morph based upon that uh, Caleb character and that avatar with the expression that we already saved out. And remember, again, you can take that expression, apply it to any character you want just the same way, and save it with the morph. So now we come in here, and we're going to add the morph. We're going to add the Caleb Happy Surprise Morph. So hopefully this is all making sense to you. Once you have an expression you want, or uh, any kind of body movement or anything, you can create the avatars that are then are going to create the morphs inside of iClone. That's basically how you do it. You don't pay attention. To it. It's just going to give some warnings. And just like we did before, I don't know if you remember, but we did before, we have different uh, morphs here that we don't need. So we're going to get rid of the tongue morph. You can always tell what morph you need by applying it. That's the morph you want. So all the rest of these morphs, like the hair mesh morph, that's obviously not going to do anything. So... Uh, so we're going to delete all the other morphs. We don't we don't need them. It's just a little annoying that we have to do this, but you know you do it. Like the shirt, see it brings over the shirt because there. We, obviously we don't want the shirt to <laughs> to do it because they're all attached. Okay, and we're all set. And so now we can send and replace this to iClone. So now inside of iClone we now have this uh, character that has that morph process that can be animated. So now uh, when we come to the morph animator we have this surprise character and so we can go anywhere on the baseline we want and then just apply that expression okay like that. and we'll just apply it down again make a little key there and then we'll turn it down okay and there we go and there's your uh, there's morph and expression and so just to reiterate you can use any expression or any morph you want, creating an avatar and then turning around and applying that uh, inside of iClone by creating a morph creator, by using morph creator and then using morph animator to animate those expressions. Okay? So hopefully this explains everything that you ever wanted to know about, about morphs and expressions and animations, and we'll see you on the forums.